T B N G。Of a break in continuity, something happened to our elders. Maybe a post-traumatic civil rights disorder. Maybe a post-traumatic Jim Crow order disorder that created a, 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 a climate that made it such that we were almost ashamed and beaten to tell the stories that happened. These stories that, if these young children heard, in the context of the bravery, the selflessness, the sacrifice, they would say, "That's gangster." I was having a discussion with my daughter last night, and、uh, she owes about 400 homeworks in history because she failed. Uh, history twice for not doing homework. So her karma was that in order to pass, she had to do. But she got like、uh, it seemed like about four hundred homeworks, four hundred questions rather,、uh, worth of homework that she has to do. So I'm trying to remember and articulate in a fashion that I think that she could understand what it is that she's facing and what she had to do. So I gave her the analogy that it was important for her to be prepared. That. These things that she's doing today are directly impacting not me, not her mother or her brothers, but that they were directly impacting impacting the future self. Come on, teach up. That ten years from now, twenty years from now, she would do like I have found myself doing from time to time. And she laughed when I told her this, but it was the God's honest truth. And that truth is that there are times that I sit in my house alone and I meditate, hoping somehow that if I meditate hard enough, that somehow or another I will be able to send a message back in time to my younger self to do the things that I needed to do. It hasn't worked thus far. Let me keep it simple. This is what a lot of y'all do. Y'all look at the chessboard. Y'all see them squares on that board. You dig? And y'all want to wipe all the pieces off the board and put checkers on there, cause that's the game you want to play. But the problem is this: you don't own the board. Somebody else is the champion of the board right now, and they playing chess. So the first thing you got to do is beat them at chess. See, 'cause then once you're the champion of the board, you clear all that shit off and say, "Now we play chess." So I told her that she's my younger self, and that the message has to be for her. That I have to realize that the things that I went through and the failures were not necessarily failures, but they were road signs that would help me to guide her in a direction. That ultimately she and our family, our lineage, could go.、Mm-hmm. So I explained to her that it was like I said, "Would you jump out of a plane if you knew that all during the time they were teaching you how to set up the parachute and how to fall and you know when the count was before you pull the ripcord? If you knew you really didn't pay attention, how would you feel jumping out that plane?、Yeah. So I'd be nervous. I said, "Yeah, of course you'd be nervous." Hope is the last thing that you want to rely on. 
two, three thousand, four thousand feet in the air. That's just not uh, something that you want to hope that you got it right. That's one of those things you want to know you got right. I am at a place where I didn't pay enough attention during the class. And now I'm 30,000 feet in the air, however high you are, besides how much I pay attention, I don't know how high in the air I am, right? And I pulled the ripcord, and now I'm tangled up in this parachute. And if you ever seen like a movie where somebody get tangled up in the parachute, the wind is on them so hard that they can't find a way, they, get, they can't even get it up off their face to figure out to how to orient themselves to pull the safety chute. Well, that's where I feel like I'm at right now, I tell her. I said, Chanel, I feel like I'm there right now. And it's a scary place to be. Because now I've got to hope, again, that if I can manage to pull this parachute that was poorly prepared off of me, that somehow or another I managed to pay attention to pull this emergency chute. Because if that doesn't work, well, that's about the end of my story. Mm. The fact of the matter is that these rappers are trying to be the personification of the man they imagine themselves being. Mm -hmm. They're looking to uh, emphasize their masculinity, their strength, mm -hmm. to appear powerful, and a position of powerlessness. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you use the words and terms that you can find that sound rough. Yeah, that, mm, uh -huh. that, uh, you know what I mean? That B. Yeah. These are things you say because it sound hard. Right. Mm -hmm. But see, there's no value system present that shows them what real strength is. They don't understand that real strength is going out and, you know, to, to march and, and, and not know whether you won't come home that night mm. because you're marching for somebody's freedom that isn't even born yet. That hasn't, that that's, hasn't translated. And again, that goes back to what I was saying about passing on the proper information. Right? You see, life is long. And the youth don't realize that. But life is long. It's not as short as you think. In fact, I heard someone say that life is the longest thing you will ever do. <laughs> okay, so I explain this to her, I lay it on, and I say, you know what, Shanae, I just don't want you to know. When I jumped out of the plane, she said, you jumped out of the plane, Dad? I said, yeah, I jumped out of the same plane you're jumping out of right now. <laughs> Teach up. So I seen that spark in her eye that made me think maybe she might have been, you know, heard that, you know, might have heard me. Because I tried to remember, and then I tried to relate in order to articulate the sort of information that she needed to hear from me to act on it. When I hear some of the criticisms levied on hip hop now and the youth now, I feel as though I'm listening to a father criticize a child that he did not raise. You know, there's a culpability here. I mean, we need to be a people that are taking accountability for what we're doing. Self-accountability. What haven't we done? Why aren't we active in our process? We're being professional disattenders. We're dis you know what a professional disattender is? Does anybody know? A cab driver is a professional disattender. A, 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 uh, uh, the dude that works the elevator is a professional disattender. Somebody that does a job that while you're doing that job, you can continue your, your conversation as if they're not there. Very good. This is what we are as parents. You don't even go outside. Grandma's not on the front porch anymore. Right. You're not even outside, right? But you send your children out there to play. And then when they come back twisted and turned around, you say, oh, look at these kids. Tell the truth. Do I feel some shame? Yeah, I feel some shame. You know what shame? I feel the shame of not being a part of their lives. Tell Thank you. you. Let's get motivated. Thank this hip hop is a result. This hip hop is ours. Right. But in order for me to get there, I can't reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. I need to start working on the axle, dealing with the drive shaft, the engine. You've already invented the wheel. Come on, come on. Help me, help me. I am taking a step towards you. You know what I know not. Please, for all of our sake, for all of our children's sake, take two steps towards us. The time is now because the time is almost up.
some of y'all are dropping like flies. You don't have forever. But you can do a thing that lasts forever. Be a forever people. I love you. I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for having me. My name is Emma Orr, and I approve this message.